like a boss. Now look, this video is something that I kind of missed out on in my youth. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I did a lot of game when I was when I was younger, and I was taught that so certain elements when it comes to attracting women were not necessary. And I pretty much did a game, got a lot of results, but because of the mentality that game has, I kind of I, 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 I kind of neglected certain parts of my life that actually increased to my sex appeal. Um, because game has a certain um, advertisement towards men that says you don't need looks, um, you don't need to dress super nice, you don't need to have a lot of money to get women. And the truth is, is that a lot of it is a lie. And a lot of it is pretty much advertisement. It's pretty much saying, like, it's pretty much, that's pretty much telling you who they're advertising to, to guys that are, that are broke, that are short, that are ugly. And they're pretty much saying, you don't need to be short, broke, or ugly. And they're like, oh my God, for real? And so you put, you get, you get, you see how that works? But even if you're short, bald, and ugly, you could still get some of these results because there are more. There are a lot of elements to your physical and sexual appeal that that you could actually fulfill in order to get some results with the ladies. Okay, so let's talk about what some of those are right now. Um, oh shit! I hope this is charging right now, people. Um, <laughs> it better be charging. Fuck! It better charge or else. There you go. Okay. So the first one is this. Okay. Your physique, right? Now, your physique goes in two different directions. In terms of your physique, in terms of your body, and your physique in terms of the adornments that you put on. Now, look, unfortunately, being tall is a cheat code. Why? Because I'm, I play basketball with kids, and these kids will be 5'10 today, and six months later, they'll be 6'7. Like, seriously. Like, seriously, like, I'm not even kidding. I've seen a few of them, motherfuckers, lucky-ass kids. And it t and I tell them, I was like, yo, kid. It was like, yo. And I was like, yo, so what's the difference between being 6'7 and being 5'9? He was like, yo, dog, it's a cheat code with the girls. I'm like, oh, really? He's like, yeah, it's a cheat code. I'm telling you, being tall does make a difference. Now, being one inch taller does make a difference also, you know. Um, I don't recommend people wearing lifts. But I'm just saying that one inch does make a difference with women. You know what I'm saying? Now, I wear normal shoes for the most part, you know. So it's I wear Jordans because I play basketball. So it kind of makes you a little bit taller, which I kind it kind of annoys me, you know, because I don't want to forget to wear Jordans. And then she's like, something's wrong with him, right? But the how tall you are does make a difference. And also how wide you are, your physique, your, your muscles. And the truth is, is that if you have a guy that's 5'9", skinny, versus a guy that's 5'9", in decent shape he's the guy who's in decent shape it's just more attractive it, it's just you get what i'm trying to, it's just more attractive that's how you increase your sex appeal just work out now you don't need to work out every day you like for example this is what i do right let me show you like how my body kind of looks right it's like it looks like that right it's not big i've been working out for like one let me show you actually the whole thing i've been working out for like a whole year ah, right okay there you go right there right it's pretty decent right it's 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 decent for, so, and the way I got these results is because for a whole year, I've been, I pretty much just do three sets. Um, I just do like um, bench press. I do it three times, five times. I, I, I go the minimum, you know, and it, I tell myself, I'm just going to do one set. And sometimes I do one set. But the point is, I just go. I do the minimum. Like, literally, I try to do the minimum. And sometimes I, I go really far. Sometimes I just do, do the minimum. And sometimes I just stay in the middle. But the point is that I go consistently, right? Just keeping it at the minimum actually gets you bigger for the most part. Um, in adornments, in terms of jewelry, like jewelry, these that type of stuff, like wearing jewelry, um, like wearing a chain, right? Wearing one or even wearing earrings. Bro, I what the fuck has been my problem? Women like that type of shit. Earrings and a guy? Like even, even if you kind of look half gay, they like that even more. What the fuck is wrong with them? You know, I just f figured that out. I've, I've been wearing a little bit of jewelry while I do game, right? Because it's the, it's not, it's not like I'm bling bling, but it's casual jewelry, wearing a few earrings, right? And bro, I'm telling you, man, like every day I do game outside, I bring home a girl. Now, I've done game the last four times. I bought home two girls. I didn't have sex with them, you know, but I brought them home, right? And I like to think that a big part of it is the the adornments. I, I just I 
thoroughly believe that it's it a lot has to do with the adornments because look at look at look at the effects it has on women notice how a woman who's wearing nice adornments looks more attractive what makes you think it's not the same with men you know other male species of the of the of the animal kingdom wear adornments most males of the in the animal kingdom have more colors most females in the animal kingdom kingdom don't look at lions most lions are the ones with the big thing and most female lines don't have shit. You know what I'm saying? So adornments do help. That's why rappers wear bling bling, all that shit. Because it, it does work. It does work. It makes you look higher status. Just having decent adornments. Rather than just wearing something plain, wear something. Earrings, chains, wear something. Just don't get mugged. <laughs> you know? Like I was walking. This is real gold, people. I was walking down the street with this, but I was like in my pocket. I was like, <laughs> you know? All right, so that's one thing. Physique and your adornments. I'm telling you, it, the truth is that if you want to, like Robert Green says, if you want to be treated like a king, dress like a king. You know? Pre-selection. Pre-selection is the next most important thing. Other women and other people seeing that you're wanted makes you more attractive. Plain and simple. Desirability is a social factor. It's a social phenomenon. Wherein they like something because other people like it. And that automatically becomes a desirable thing. Humans have to look at other people wanting that in order to assess whether or not you should get that. And that's why when a guy has a girlfriend, he's more attracted to women. Because other women see him and they pretty much can, can <coughs> pretty much know that he's been screened and she chose him, right? It's almost like they assume that she screened him. They assumed that she observed and critiqued his personality and said he's worthy. And so they pretty much said, okay, she did all of the hard work for us. Let me take him because he's already been selected, right? Rather than just going out in the dating field and looking for the right guy, find somebody else's right guy and take him from him. So that's the mentality behind being wanted. Is that it pretty much, when other women see that other women want you, they pretty much assume that you're a desirable person. Now, it doesn't mean that they have to be sucking your dick. <clears throat> no. It means that they have to be looking at you and smiling, right? Looking at you and laughing at something that you said. Or all of them have to be looking at you at the same time, right? Or the most attractive girl in the group look at you. The point is, is that if you're around them and you act masculine and you don't act like a gay little kid, other women will be attracted to you or curious about you. Um, this happens with friends. If I meet somebody who's a weirdo, and I'm like, there's no way this person attracts friends. And then all of a sudden, I see him in a social circle with friends. Automatically, I'm going to think he's more likable. It's what humans do, right? When you see somebody alone, you automatically think they're not as likable. It's what humans do. You pretty much assume. You can't, you, you, humans just use context to assume, you know? Why? Because humans naturally don't like to, don't like what's unfamiliar. Humans don't like to not know. So rather than not know, they pretty much assume. Right? It's uncomfortable. So we so we need to feel like we are familiar with our environment. And that's why a lot of times we assume. So pre-selection. The next one is cues of resources, right? Cues of resources. Um, because men a woman's men judge women based on their looks because a look, their look is a is a cue for their for their um re reproductive um viability, right? Soft skin, translucent skin. Um, 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 perky breasts, right? Pretty much say that she's young and ready to have a kid. So those are cues, right? Well, but with men, what women need for men is not to have a kid, but to provide resources for her. So what she does is she looks for cues in her be in his behavior. No, for, she looks for cues, external cues of resources. That means having a nice house. That means having jewelry. I'm not kidding. Like it's almost like it's almost like a like a peacock where. She, the reason why having so much color is good at the cost of having of defending yourself is because he says, look, I have, I have such a good immune system that I'm able to afford all of these colors. Having adornments and having a nice car pretty much says, I have so much money that I'm able to afford jewelry, that I'm able to afford a car. Now, I don't have a car. I don't have jewelry. I do have some, right? But I, but I do notice it does make a difference, right? And also, it means having a girlfriend you pretty much say hey she likes me enough to the point where i where at least i'm not broke that's what women would assume it's kind of like you're with him most likely he's not broke right resources could be 
um, having money, you know, like you know, money, taking taking her out on an expensive date. Now, I don't agree with taking a woman out on an expensive date. I would prefer for you to do it after sex for the most part, right? But that's that's another thing, right? Buying a woman a drink is telling her, hey, look, I have some resources. There's a, there's a reason why people do that. Buying a woman a gift, right? A thoughtful gift. Those things say I have resources. Wearing nice clothes, right? Presenting yourself in a nice and professional manner. Those say I have resources. Right? So that's one thing, right? Cues of resources. Um, those will increase your sex appeal. Cues of power. Cues of power comes across in terms of other people listening to you while you talk in there and, and they are in silence, right? It could be that other men respect you. Um, other women respect you as well. Um, it could be that um, you're the best at your job for the most part. It could be that um, you are a leader of men, a leader of people. You're the manager at your job. You're the, you're the executive, you're the CEO of your company. Those are all cues of power. It could be that you're the leader of your team, right? Another aspect of power is the way you behave. It could be moving slower rather than moving faster, talking slower than talking fast, responding slower than responding fast, even blinking slower than blinking fast, right? Responding faster, responding slower to text than responding fast, right? When somebody calls your name, you don't look instantly. They call your name, you look slowly. Rather than talking loud, you talk in a more relaxed way, right? All of those things say power. All of those things say I'm not in a hurry. All of those things say that you are in complete and utter control. Those are all attractive traits that every man needs to develop, right? And also another part of power is listening to people, learning to say less than necessary, leaning back and relaxing, right? Um, other, things that, that, other things that you could do is when you smile, don't smile too much, smile halfway, right? Be adapt more of the way of, of the Godfather. That should be more of your way of behavior. The Godfather or Michael Corleone. All of those all of those ways of behaving are trigger in most humans attraction it, because it pretty much it, they feel the pressure, right? Um, so you pretty much learn to do that. You you learn how to give powerful looks, right? So a powerful look could be looking normally and then looking like a like she's giving like a. It's like saying like some like learning how to speak with your eyes for the most part. Like if somebody says, "Alexis, are you from New York City?" Rather than saying no, you just say, "What do you think?" Right? Or if somebody says, "Are you from Are you from there?" Rather than say, "Yeah, I'm from there," I go, "Mm-hmm, yeah." Like saying, mm -hmm, yeah, right? You learn to speak without words. That's what I'm trying to say. Find ways to just speak without words. Find ways to speak with your eyes, with your hands, with your sub, with nonverbal, and you're pretty much going to, you're pretty much gonna, going to communicate power for the most part. It could be that you're the best player on your team. You're the best student in your, in your school. You, you're the direct, you're the president of the chess club. You're the president of the leadership association. You put yourself in positions of leadership. You, you, have a, you have a group where people run together and they meet other people who run. You have a martial arts school where you teach people martial arts because you're an expert. All of those things, when people see you performing that, when you have a YouTube channel, is our cues of power. It could be that you're physically imposing, right? Those are cues of power. Right. The next one is alliances and friends. Um, alliances and friends. Oh, also another cue of power could be that you're somebody that they, that they need in order to access a certain industry. That's another example. Um, cues of resources could be, I mean, cues of um, alliances and friends. Having friends makes you more attractive. Having alliances makes you more attractive. And the reason why is because evolutionarily speaking, the more friends you have, the more connections you have, the more ability you have to get out of problems. Um, the, and women find that attractive. Why? Because it's beneficially evolutionarily. I always remember what's attractive, it's pretty much it's what's beneficial for her. All right? If you're somebody that provides a lot of benefits to this woman, you are pretty much attractive. It could be physical benefits in terms of good genes or resources. But having friends and alliances makes you more attractive. Um, if you have a guy who has no friends, similar attractive level, versus a guy with a, with a, with a lot of friends, similar attractive level, this guy's going to be more attractive naturally. And this and the same with women and men. It's just how it is, right? 
Um, so that's why you have to focus on making friends. Making friends is really important as a person. As a person in general, making friends is really important. But in your dating life, making friends is really, really important because a woman will judge you based on your friends a lot more. And and if they if they see that you have good friends, she'll like you even more. And that's why you have to be careful with the friends that you surround yourself with. And the last one is skills. Being good at something. Being good at basketball. Being good at fucking playing uh, hockey. Being good at fucking jacking off. I don't give a fuck. Be good at something. Master something. Because to the woman, it indicates discipline. To the woman, it indicates that you have self-control. To the woman, it indicates that you are an attractive person person it indicates that you indicates you have a strong mentality so that's why i recommend you guys get good at something pick up a sport and practice it to into the point that you master that skill <clears throat> or it could be you you master networking it could be that you master art it could be that you master your hobby it could be anything the point is there's always going to be some kind of pussy for that skill. It could be hockey pussy. It could be art pussy. It could be political pussy. I don't give a fuck. Just get good at something and make sure that people who value that skill see you do it. Or make sure that a group or a person who lacks that skill and needs it in their lives sees you performing that skill at a high level. All of a sudden, you're going to be wanted and needed. And some women will find you sexually more attractive. Right? All right, so those are the one, two, three, four, five, six elements of, of, of a man's sex appeal, all right? If you think there are more, let me know in the comments down below. Be easy. All right, and <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if, you're, if you consider yourself a nice guy, if you're the type of person that always tries to, always gets played by women, is considered like a mama's boy, or you like assertiveness, or you've been bullied when you were a little kid, and so you develop some nice guy's tendencies, then I will check, I will highly recommend you check out my new course, Nice Guy. It's specifically made for just nice people in general. I'm a nice guy, I was a nice guy, I was a Bible teacher, for God's sake, I was a Bible teacher. It doesn't get any more nicer than that, okay? So in this course, I will teach you about the art of assertiveness. And if you fix, if you just learn to become more assertive in a healthy and non-toxic way, what will happen is that men will respect you and women will bang you for the most part, okay? As long as women respect you and see you as a man, that's all that matters. So this course is more about how to embrace your masculine side. If a guy watches this, he'll embrace his masculine side. If a woman watches this, they'll embrace their feminine. This is a course specifically made to bring out your assertive self in a healthy way. So you're going to learn about the, the source of human aggression. Um, you gotta learn about how to how to assert yourself in terms of um, in, in, in a in a work situation. What to do if somebody disrespects you? Um, how how to take how to know if somebody is disrespecting you or not? Because when you're a nice person, you assume that everybody has good intentions. So you can check out all of this. It's a pretty big course, but the size of the course it doesn't matter. Um, you can check out all of this for just ninety nine dollars. And if you don't like it, just ask for your money back, and I'll send you your money back. No questions asked not one time in my career have i've ever rejected somebody's refund so if you don't like it it's a money back guarantee this is the equivalent of buying a sneaker okay it's a really good investment so i'll see you guys inside it's a 30-day money back guarantee and you will not regret it because after this course you will learn how to become more assertive and women will stop playing you it's plain and simple and that's all that matters i'll see you guys inside